Hi, everyone. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Monday. And as we uh, look at the radar, uh, it is filling in uh, the it's it's amazing how the models actually had all the rain uh, down covering the coastal plain and all through New Jersey and into Delaware by 7 a.m. this morning. And uh, it, it just it seems like it's just a little slower. I mean, there, there's there's uh, quite a bit of rain going on in eastern Pennsylvania that extends down into Maryland and Delaware. And it looks like this southern area is expanding. So it seems to be taking a little bit longer for the rain to get into coastal areas and also into central and eastern Connecticut. But it, it should fill in uh, before too long. And hopefully we'll get a decent amount. On the southern back edge, uh, there's a gap, but there's still some more rain that's gelling up through western Virginia and even into southeastern Virginia. So I'm thinking that at least into this afternoon, once this rain gets underway along coastal areas, it should put down a fair amount. And inland areas are doing a lot better because we do have rain uh, into the Hudson Valley, and as we said, into northeastern and even into southeastern Pennsylvania, uh, doing okay with it this morning. But honestly, to me, this is still a gross underperformance of, uh, of the rainfall that the models have predicted. And I'm going to show you here, um, this is the very short-range HRRR model uh, from this morning. And it does fill that rain in for a few hours and then continues it. Uh, we're now into 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But that rain area does shrink away uh, as we go into uh, tonight on this model. And you can still see, by the way, the remnant low of uh, Tropical Storm Julia as it just kind of straddles along the coastline. And there's actually a little bit of convection that's developed around it this morning, but um, you know that's only going to en enhance rainfall uh, in areas to our south. None of this uh, seems to want to get up here. And in fact, uh, this model would suggest that the rains would probably be over with, and there would be a, uh, very little for the overnight or even leftover into tomorrow morning. The NAM model uh, kind of wants to be a little more aggressive with this uh, in terms of rainfall, but it's still uh, you can see it, it sort of shrinks away as we go into this evening, uh, a little bit more for Long Island, and a little coastal rain hangs out uh, into early Tuesday morning. Now, I'm kind of suspect about this northern fringe here. That may very well not be there, and it gradually dries out as we go through the afternoon anyway, and it also wants to leave a lot of moisture uh, to the south uh, into uh, Wednesday and Wednesday night and has it awfully close here. But again, I don't know how real this is, and by the way, you can also see uh, at the very end in the lower corner, uh, the appearance of uh, Tropical Storm Carl at this point. Now, as far as Carl is concerned, uh, we're going to uh, take a look at that. First off, here's the wide satellite view. And uh, let me just uh, show you where all the fronts are, what, what, what's actually going on. But, you know, we have this approaching front that's just, just taking its time. Uh, you have you, you can't really see it too well on the infrared, but this is what's left of Julia Carl is out here somewhere, so that's not an issue. So we're we're uh, getting uh, tropical moisture uh, that's coming up right up this way, just like that. So we've got this uh, south southwest flow, a very uh, not a very very strong one, just just sort of a weak trough that's here uh, along the east coast. And then you have all this, you have drier air uh, that's coming down uh, very very slowly behind it. So this is going to be our weather as we get into um, uh, later Tuesday, Tuesday night into Wednesday. And and then after that, I mean, if, if we don't get whatever rain we get out of this, if we don't uh, put it down, um, there's not going to be any uh, appreciable rainfall here uh, for the rest of the week and into next weekend. All right, so here's uh, Tropical Storm Carl, uh, still looking like a rather weak uh, tropical storm here. Uh, it, it's it may be the core of the circulation looks a little better this morning, but uh, overall um, I'm not really overly impressed with this. And the weaker that Carl stays, the further west it's going to wind up getting uh, on its track. So let's take a look now at uh, what we can expect from that from C Tropical Storm Carl. I'm going to tell you that very little, uh, in my view, has changed in in what I've been saying for the last several days with regards to Carl. And that is um, the upper air is just not conducive for anything to move up the east coast, um, well, up the immediate coast at least. 
uh, and this will stay offshore because everything is going according to plan. Uh, and we'll show you on the upper air here on the European model. Here's our ridge that Carl is moving under, but uh, as we, let me just back it up, sorry. There's our ridge that Carl is moving under. You can see that trough that's approaching the coast. It kind of lingers there. Part of it just sort of hangs back um, and, and sits off uh, along the southeast coast of the United States. You've got these westerly winds um, going across uh, uh, southern Canada and the northeast. And there's the ridge still there. Uh, at the end of the week, it's still there. But now as we uh, move into um, Friday, and here's where you start to get into um, issues with regards to the uh, ridge. So here's our westerly winds, and they're starting to sink a little further south. Uh, the upper ridge uh, that's out here is right there. Here's that upper high, and now you're getting a bit of a weakness right in here. So Carl is responding to that weakness by turning into it and moving to the northeast. So what happens is, uh, as we uh, go through another 48 hours on the European model, uh, you, you can see these westerlies get very strong, uh, very deep trough here uh, that forms uh, in east over, over Labrador and Newfoundland. Right there, there's a big upper air low, and the westerlies dip way, way to the south. Just remember, you know, think of the jet stream. Remember, I always kind of describe it like this. You ever see a, um, a baby's toy with the gears in the box and you have to kind of put all the gears together and then you turn them and you turn one gear and it turns them all? It's kind of how the atmosphere works, but the only difference is that the gears themselves are constantly changing in uh, size and in strength. So uh, it causes all the other gears in the atmosphere, uh, The this, uh, this upper low, this upper low back here, this um, ridge. Uh, that you see that starts to build uh, across the um, Midwest and 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 uh, Great Lakes and and Northern Plains, well, the eastern part of the Northern Plains. So when one thing changes in the atmosphere, it changes everything. And this is what we have, especially with Carl, because this strengthening trough then breaks up, uh, takes up Carl and moves it away uh, to the east, northeast, and east. It may get close to Bermuda, depending on how sharp a right turn it makes. And then we've got the ridge still out here, um, but it's kind of narrow in scope. So if anything comes off the African coast, if it's underneath that ridge, it'll move westward. But right in there, we've got a weakness. So we'll see if that um, weakness holds over time. It may, it may not, but we'll see. Uh, and as we go through um, the latter part of the forecast period, now this has got implications for us in that when you've got a trough like this, and let me just uh, get back my pen here. But when you got a trough like this, a very strong northerly flow here uh, in the upper atmosphere, uh, the trough is to the east. Uh, there's going to be a big surface high that's going to come down here with some pretty cool air for the weekend and into early next week. It'll start to arrive on Saturday, and you'll really feel it uh, Sunday into Monday. In fact, uh, a very uh, <clears throat> it has very cool air. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see some early season frosts uh, in parts of uh, interior New England uh, if the models continue to show the magnitude of the high the way it is. But uh, I want to point out that it doesn't matter in the long term because uh, when we move ahead, uh, guess what? Um, we've got now into, uh, this is day 10, which is Thursday, the 29th of September. Uh, we've got this big ridge that uh, starts to build again in the eastern states. You can see it right there. And the westerlies get pushed up uh, a little bit further to the north, at least for a little while, until <clears throat> uh, the, the uh, westerlies lower again. So it's this constant flexing back and forth of a ridge uh, in the east that gets uh, weakened every uh, few days or so by a, a cold front and a trough that move on through. And with regards to Carl's track, let me just put the surface here. We'll get get a 500 map with the surface. I kind of like to use the European um, with, with this sort of thing, but uh, you, you really can't see Carl too well here. Let me just back it up. There we go. So here's Carl. Here's a new system that's moving off the African coast that um, I'm not 
thinking that this is this is going to wind up moving out and staying weak or at least going out uh, further east. But there's Carl already making the turn. The stronger the system Carl is, the earlier it's going to make its turn to the northeast and east. And I think that's a done deal. And then you see this big high that builds down into the eastern states late next weekend, which eventually turns into a warm high. And uh, we see uh, temperatures for a day or two back into the 80s as we go longer term. And you still got these weather systems coming off the African coast. So who knows what is going to happen with respect to the tropics down the road. So let's uh, call it a day. Uh, it was a pretty long discussion. Hopefully we'll get an inch or two of rain out of this. I'm not really holding my breath, folks. Um, it's just a very, very frustrating process overall to watch um, the, the rain just uh, not play up according to plan. But this is what happens when you're in a drought. Uh, weather models tend to overproduce, reality underperforms. When the pattern is the opposite, when you're in a very wet pattern, uh, the opposite happens. Models show less and we wind up getting more. It's just that we're in this dry pattern and um, it will we'll stay in it until such time that it breaks. I mean, there's really no sign of any kind of long-term change in the overall dryness that we've been experiencing here in the East for the last um, six or seven months or so. Some rainfall deficits up to um, a foot and a half in some places. So don't forget uh, ssstormchasing.com for all your storm chasing needs. Um, New York, um, weatherlongisland.com, meteorologist joechaffee.com, download my app, subscribe to my forecast, it's just 99 cents a month. And if you haven't subscribed for free to my YouTube channel, please do. Um, uh, it's great. I try and stay engaged. I'm also on Facebook, also on Twitter. Uh, you can go on my uh, website, meteorologistjoechaffee.com or weatherlongisland.com and link to my Facebook and Twitter accounts from there. So have a great day. And don't forget, I'll be on also tonight on Fios 1 News Long Island, Fios 1 News New Jersey, and Fios 1 News Hudson Valley.